having looked at 165 years of the history of Bates Smart, it became apparent that there's um, some significant buildings that we've lost, others that have been retained, and then through that we were quite interested in the idea, well, how do we treat heritage in the city going forward, allowing for protection of our wonderful buildings of the past, but also allowing for future heritage. My feeling is there's been a little bit of a dip in terms of the quality of Melbourne's building stock. So it's a really important time to reassess about how we treat heritage, but at the same time we don't want to lock down the city by being too overtly controlling. I think we've reached uh, an interesting and challenging point with heritage and new development. I think we've had heritage controls in place for a very long time and they've been pretty effective at holding the buildings and places that we really treasure. But I think in the last decade there's been incredible pressure in relation to new development, changing aspirations about the city and a desire to intensify, if you like, the city and get greater density. I think uh, Melbourne having a blanket heritage overlay needs to be put in the context of the fact that Melbourne is one of the fastest growing cities like Sydney in Australia and there's going to be a lot of demand uh, on population pressure on Melbourne. So there has to be a fine balance between heritage and development. So a blanket overlay on heritage may be a little bit too far but at the same time we don't want to lose our heritage. I think sites have got to be assessed on their merits. Uh, if there is no significant heritage argument, I think this should be, it should be enabled to be um, developed and greater density. We've got to recognise that, that we need to create space for, for people to reside and occupy and work in Melbourne and without some extra density and without some recognition of the relationship between new density and maintaining heritage, that's not going to happen. I think it needs a real vision. I think Melbourne has lost in many respects um, a sort of visionary proposition about what the city is going to be in 5, 10, 20 years. And I think the vision for me is very much about a physical vision, about scale, height, dimension, um, the nature of built form that we'll have and how that fits with the existing fabric and how it complements, hopefully, and, and balances. I think there was a range of really interesting propositions put forward by the various speakers. The need for clarity about development and how we allow the city to progress and also an emphasis on um, improving design quality, not allowing substandard buildings to be built and about having this idea of someone taking control of Melbourne and, and really having a, a very clear idea about what the city wants to be and aiming, I guess, to continue to be one of the world's great cities.